So discussed in the last lecture. In this section, we will understand what is the cost planning, budgeting, and other area of project systems. So basically, when we talk about the cost planning, cost planning is a kind of initial estimate of your cost. And on basis of this cost, initial estimate of this cost, you will finally prepare your budgeting. So remember, one thing is cost, another thing is budgeting. So we can say the cost planning is kind of initial estimate, as I said. And on basis of this, you can freeze your budget. Now, cost planning is an essential part of a project management. The project managers need to understand where cost fall in their schedule to manage the demand of resources. Because uh, here we are talking about the time as well as the money. So sometimes what happens during your project structure, you will find that at particular phase, you need a more, there is an involvement of more cost in terms of the resources. So if you have planned your costing properly, then there won't be any delay. Sometimes you have, you may have a delay due to your improper costing also. So the cost planning is one of the important part. Here, there are different type of planning approaches available to us. Hierarchical planning, the first one, network planning, and the unit costing. So see, uh, when we go into detail, we will understand what is the difference between these two, three types of planning and how we can map in our system. Now, next we will move to the budgeting. So here you can see that the cost planning is coming from the left hand and there is a discussion based on a, here a group of people is sitting. They're discussing the different aspect of cost planning. That is your initial estimate. And based off that cost planning, the final budget is derived. So you see the cost planning is a kind of input which goes here. And after discussion, you can finalize your budgeting. Now, when we talk about the budgeting, so budgeting is simply, as we understand in your common language, budgeting is simply plan your financials according to your need. It is a budgeting. Now, here we can allocate budget at the different level. Generally, budgets are allocated at the WBS level, at your work breakdown structure level. Suppose I have one project, as I gave you example, in that project, we want to monitor the cost for the different expenditure, the broad expenditure, like civil work. In a construction of a building, I want to monitor the cost for civil work. I also want to monitor the cost of electrical work, plumbing work, okay? So now what I can do, I can mention budget, let's say at the civil level, let's say my, total budget is for civil is 10k okay now under that civil i can have a sub wbs also because in ps that is a hierarchical structure you have a one wbs called civil that we call, we can call it as a parent wbs then that w parent wbs can have a multiple childs okay so civil is a parent under the civil we can define pcc as a one wbs child wbs child one RCC child two, road construction child three. So our total budget for civil is 10K and we can further distribute this 10K into the child. Okay, so the budgeting is simply not to monitor the cost, but on the basis of this budget, we can also control the cost. Like if we have fixed up a budget for a particular WBS, then we cannot procure more than that assigned budget. Okay, so this is a kind of controlling. So budgeting is not only monitoring, but it is also an important aspect of controlling in your project system. Now we will talk about the confirmation. See, uh, till now we talked about the planning and planning in terms of a time and in terms of a money. What about the actual numbers? Okay. Let's say I define that my civil work will take 15 days of time. This is my plan. But how would I know whether it is on the track or not? So to capture the actual progress of your groundwork, we use one concept, which is called confirmation. Confirmation is a 
tool which will help us to know progress and also it will help us to calculate the duration for our remaining activities. Here we can say that confirmation document the state of processing for activity and activity element, right? So in our, let's say in our civil work, there are multiple 10 activities. There are 10 activities involved in civil work. If I want to know which activity is on the which label, so definitely I have to do confirmation. So at the time of confirmation, we can confirm the different activities. At the time of confirmation, we need to enter the actual start date of the activity, end date of the activity and the progress. Let's say start date is today's date and uh, yesterday is that and the end date is today's date and I say that my 50% work is over. So I can mention this detail in confirmation. Now on basis of this confirmation, here if we go back, you can see here we have one yellow line. In previous lecture, I told you that this yellow line is your actual work. So this yellow line gets updated based on our confirmation. Okay, so the plan, not only the planning, but your monitor for the purpose of monitoring your confirmation has become an essential part. Now, what we confirm here, we not only confirm the time, but we also confirm the resources which we have used. Let's say as per planning, I need four labor, but in actual situation, I consumed uh, five labor hours. Okay, so that detail can also be mentioned in a confirmation. Now, when you now when you have a planning and you have confirmed something, it means you are about to end your project. So the last step is called project settlement. Settlement is the process where actual cost incurred for the WBS network activities are allocated in the whole or in a part to one or more receivers. Now see, in your project structure, there are multiple WBS and you have booked the cost at multiple WBSs. Okay. Now at the time of the settlement activity, what you going to do you simply collect all this cost and to uh, and you will collect this cost to one big area okay now what are the cost the cost of your material which you have used first the cost of invoices when we talk about invoices it may be a invoice of material the bill of material or it may be bill of some services like if you have hired some third party for job execution purpose service vendor so that can also be booked under so in short your all type of cost which accumulated during your complete project cycle will be clubbed together and it will be settled to one receiver now at the time of settlement you need always need two party one party will act as a sender another will act as a receiver here, the meaning of party is not any uh, outside party. The party means any object. Okay, like your WBS can act as a sender and your cost center can act as a receiver. So it is simply accumulation of a cost to know the final cost of your project. Now, in this settlement, another thing is that suppose uh, sometime your project duration is very large. Okay, the project duration is a two hour, a two year duration. So in that case, you are not going to wait for two hours, two years. Okay, so what here you can do? You can go for a periodic settlement. Periodic settlement means you are going to settle your project periodically based on month or quarter as per need of your business, okay? So it is called periodic settlement. And here after once you have a periodic settlement in place and at the end of your project, you can go for a final settlement. See, whenever we settle any project, it generate one AUC. AUC is asset under construction. Because see, what is your objective of project? Our objective of a project is to generate something new, okay? Like when we're talking about the building part, so our objective is to construct the building. So that is a kind of asset for the organization. Whatever we are generating, it is a kind of asset, whether it is a tangible asset or intangible asset, it will be asset only. So 
we can say that we can have a periodic settlement. We can also go for a final settlement. And the selection of a whether uh, we, you want to go for a periodic or final settlement is purely based on duration of your project and your business need. So see, this is a, what I told you. Initially, when you have settled your project periodically, you will have a, this type of asset. It is yet not completed because you are settling it periodically, but every month you are settling it. Once this is over, when you make a final settlement, then you will have a final asset, this asset in place. So this is the objective for settlement. Now let's talk about briefly about the project reporting. See, it is very important to not only to monitor the time and cost, but other aspect of your projects also. So for the for that purpose, in SAP project system, we have a different sort of reports. One report let us tell, let tell us about the budgeting part. What is my what was my original budget? How much I consumed? What is available to me? On the same line, this sort of report is also available for your timeline. But these two reports are not sufficient because in a long project, you need a multiple reporting tools to understand the project current situation, to understand the current situation. And on basis of your current situation, you want to take some proactive actions just to reduce your timeline. So there are multiple reports. When we go to the uh, course part, we will see what are the different reports available and how effectively we can monitor and control our project activities with the help of this reports. So that's it about the brief about the project system overview. In next lectures, we will go in much detail about the each and every component of a PS. And we will go to the SAP and we will see how we can configure and execute the processes. Thank you.